worthy to be praised and worthy to be magnified. He said, if you seek me, you'll find me if you search with me with all your heart. Come on, let's search for him with all our hearts. If you're a hand lifter, lift your hands towards heaven today. If you've never lifted your hands, it's an act of surrender. It's an act of saying, God, I need you and you only, God. I surrender everything to you. I'm seeking after you today, God. I need you. I'm struggling. I need you, Lord. I'm facing a battle. I need you. I'm facing a giant. I need you. I'm going through it, God. I need you today. We're going to sing that portion. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and he answered me. And I need you to sing it with everything that's down in your heart today. Come on, let's seek him. He said he'll, we'll find him if we search with him. I want to find him today. Oh, I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord. Come on, impact. Let me hear you today. And he answered. That's why I trust him. That's why I trust him. I sought the Lord. Come on, he hears you this morning, and he's going to answer this morning. I feel breakthrough. I feel a miracle. That's why I trust him. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord, and he heard, and he answered. I sought the Lord. Come on, last time, let me hear you. Hallelujah. Father, we trust in you this morning. How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity as we join together to lift up our voices. The Bible says you inhabit the praises of your people. You sit, you dwell, you establish. You're here today, God. We honor you. You are the honored guest here today. Have your way here today. We honor you today. King of kings and Lord of lords, we thank you. And Father, we're so thankful that when you show up, it says where the spirit of the Lord is, when he shows up, there's liberty. And I thank you that somebody's getting free from depression this morning, that somebody's getting free from anxiety this morning, that somebody's getting free from shame this morning, from their past this morning, from our hurt, from bitterness. We trust in you this morning. We need you this morning. Have your way here today. Come Holy Spirit. We thank you. We love you. We glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, come on, if you really believe it, put your hands together and give it a triumphant. Make some noise. The Bible calls it a Shabbat. You ought to praise him. Make some noise. He's worthy to be praised today. Amen. You can be seated if you're not already making your way there. How many glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Man, we are so happy that you are here this morning. We are so glad that you're here this morning. If this is your first time, we welcome you, and you are our guest along with the Lord this morning. We're so thankful that you're here. Uh, just a, I don't want to say just a few announcements, but just a couple announcements if you would indulge me for a second. Um, on your row, there are prayer request cards. They're there every Sunday. We have a team that works hard. They put those prayer request cards out there 
And for this reason and for this purpose, for the next announcement is tomorrow night is the Gatekeepers Women's Prayer Night. We're at the Weirton campus at 6 o'clock where we will bombard heaven for those prayer requests. You are not doing life alone. We care about what's going on in your life. God cares what's going on in your life. And so um, throughout the message, if I see your uh, head down and, you're, and it looks like you're maybe writing, I'll know you're not texting but that you're writing on your prayer request. They even have a, a pen there. A pen is free for you to take and have, an impact pen that you can write down because we are going to bombard heaven. Uh, maybe you filled it out last week or the week before. We're praying. We're praying. Every week we're praying and believing that God's going to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you could ever ask or think. How many still believe that God answered prayer, that God moves upon prayers? And so we're, I just need you, at the end of service, the ushers are going to come forward where they're going to collect the offering. You just fold that prayer request, throw that in there, and we are going to pray. For those who love to pray, and we have to make sure that we are a praying church. If you're not a praying church, you're a dying church. You can do all the outreaches you want. You can do all the fanciness you want. You can have all the, the nice glitter and lights, and you can have all the nice little things that we do. We believe in doing things with excellence. But if you ain't praying, you're dying. I mean, that's just, the, that's just the, the New Testament church. It was a praying church. And we want to make sure that we're a praying church. So if you have time tomorrow, it's the women's gatekeeper, but they, they won't throw the guys out. If you're a praying guy, if you're going to go up there and walk around and, and, and be like baptized in pickle juice, they might say something to you, but you want to get in there with the ladies and bombard heaven, come on, bring it, bring it on. And we're going to believe for God to do some amazing things. Hey, communion in the back. If you want to partake communion at any time, we welcome that. Um, we're so glad that we have the opportunity for that. We thank the Lord for his death, burial, and resurrection. If you walked in here and not sure what kind of church this is, that's the kind of church we celebrate and we lift up. The name of Jesus, the death, the burial, and the resurrection. You ain't going to find anything else other than that here. Amen? Amen? All right. Hey, let's get into the Word today as Jonathan comes out and he's helping me today. Um, man, a lot happening in the world. Can you say amen to that? Amen. I know I wasn't going to say, but Butch was on vacation, so the first service, he, he preached, Butch preached last week, and so the first service, um, they brought out the podium, and it was like down, it was, it was down, like they brought it out, and I put my thing, and it was like, I don't know if he's watching, but I got you, Butch, so I had to raise it up. <laughs> But there's a lot happening in the world. Can you say amen to that? A lot that's transpiring, a lot that's taking place. But one of the things that I, I see happening in the world is I see the enemy losing. I, 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 this is just me. I see, I see the enemy losing ground. I talked to, I was like thinking, what's that noise? And then the kids are get the kids are getting it. The kids, I think the kids are outdoing us this morning. I was like, bring John back up here. We gotta bump it out like that. I was like, boom, boom. I was like, where is that noise coming from? That's good noise to have. Yeah, I love it. I love it. But one of the things I see, and just along with that kids' church, is the enemy's losing ground. I every week, you know. Friends with a lot of pastors. I've, I've pastored in a lot of places throughout uh, the United States. I, I was in uh, Los Angeles, California. I've been to you know Atlanta, Georgia. I've been to Houston, Texas. I mean, uh, that's pastoring or whatever it may be. I preach in about every state that you could possibly think of. You know, uh, Iowa or Florida and California. And I mean, you just start naming some states you wouldn't even think about it. I just been in there and preached. So I just have a lot of friends. We stay connected. We encourage one another and strengthen one another. And I really want you to know this, that, that what's happening in the world right now, what's transpiring, is just the enemy losing. He's losing ground. Because what I hear every Sunday 
and maybe Mondays and Tuesdays when all the pastors get together and we're all texting and stuff like that, I'm hearing great things of what the Lord is doing. I mean, I'm hearing of souls getting saved. I'm hearing of baptisms happening. I'm hearing marriages that are getting restored. I'm hearing of healings happening. I'm hearing people that are breaking free from shame, breaking free from regret, breaking free from uh, 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 the disappointment of life. Like, I'm hearing great things that are happening. And so you have to know with that, as the kingdom of God is advancing, as the kingdom of God is taking ground as the kingdom of God is taking new territory as we like to say this is my old school preacher coming out at me but what we like to say is that we are literally going into the enemy's camp and we are taking back what the enemy stole from us that's a old school preaching song I went to the enemy's camp and I, we ain't got time for that but we're taking back and the enemy sees that. The enemy realizes that he is losing ground. And the Bible is, is true in John chapter 10, verse 10. It says that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I've come to give life and life more abundantly. I'm a sports guy, and you, you always know uh, someone who's a, a sore loser. Because what do they do? They'll lie, they'll cheat, they'll manipulate, they'll scheme. The enemy is just a sore loser that we are gaining ground. And he's trying to just gather anything he can. He's just trying to get little scraps of trying to do anything he can to try to get the body of Christ to get all discombobulated. He'll lie, he'll steal, he'll destroy, he'll manipulate, and he'll scoff. That's a biblical word, scoff. He'll imitate. He'll try to take the authentic and manipulate it and deceive it. That's all, that's all, that's all it is. Herod did the same thing. Herod, Herod seen that, that Herod wanted it to be all about him. And the enemy's the same way. He wants it to be all about him. That's why in Isaiah it talks about when the enemy got booted. He was like, I will be lifted up. I will do it. I want. And Herod had the same mentality. Because Jesus was going out and preaching and people were getting healed. And people were getting delivered. And people were getting set free. And demons were being loosed. And people were beginning to follow Jesus. Well, Herod said, no, 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 no. Who is this guy? Who is this guy? No, no. It's about me. It should be about me. Herod seen he was losing ground. So he sent word out. He says, get word out to this Jesus of Nazareth. I'm going to kill him when I see him. They approached Jesus and they come to Jesus and said, hey, Herod wants to kill you. <laughs> Jesus not moved. Jesus' response back to them. In Luke chapter 13, you can read it when you get home. Jesus' response to them was when they said, Herod wants to kill you. And he has the framework to do it, but Herod was losing ground. Jesus' response is, go tell that fox. Imagine the look on those people's face when he told them that. Like, oh no, you did. Go tell that fox, look, I will keep driving out demons, healing the people today and tomorrow, and on the third day, I'm going to reach my goal. And then in verse 33 of that same chapter, he says, Nevertheless, I must keep going today, tomorrow, the next day, the next day, the next day. The Bible doesn't say that, but I'm just saying he's saying that. And the next day, and the next day, and the next day, and the next day. And that's all that's happening in the world that you see everything. You're seeing on social media. You're seeing with the Olympics and everything that they're doing. And people are coming out, oh, we should have did more. Said that. God is not shaken. The enemy is the one shaken. The enemy is the one trying to mock. The enemy is the one trying to get people to move. The enemy is trying to get the body of Christ uh, discombobulated. He's the one that's losing ground. We're seeing souls saved. We're seeing lives changed. I want to encourage you that when you get home today and you're on social media, don't get caught up in the enemy's game. Talk about the goodness of God. Talk about, man, service was so good today. 
People were getting saved. People were doing. Worship was so good today. I'm saying bye to depression. I'm saying bye to shame. And I'm saying hello to joy and peace and happiness. Oh, church was so great. I met some people today that encouraged me, that strengthened me. I'm not going to get caught up. I'm going to keep advancing the kingdom of God. We're going to keep moving forward for the kingdom of God. Jesus was basically saying, let's go to tell that fox. Nothing's going to move me. That's what the enemy wants. Nothing is going to move me. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, kind of where I want to hang my hat today, if you give me a few moments. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. All right, we're not waiting on you. Steph, you got your Bible? You always have your Bible. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58, right? Oh, come on. Can I read it? Come on, girl. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast. Let nothing move you. Always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. I knew it, but I wanted to make sure I read, read it. I'm going to keep it. He says, let nothing move you. This is what happened with Herod and Jesus, and this is a response. This is a response with the body of Christ. He said, when they said, Herod wants to kill you, he, oh. no, his response like, go tell that fox. Nothing is going to move me. I'm here doing the work of the kingdom. Elijah had the prophets of Baal, and they were going to destroy, but Elijah wasn't moved. Elijah called fire down from heaven. He says, nothing's going to move me. But, but, but. As he just called fire down from heaven, but yet he, Jezebel came by and says that she was going to kill him. What happened? He moved. The next that you find him, he's up under a juniper tree. Praying that he would die. Yo, you just called fire down from heaven. You were just telling the prophets of Baal, like, nothing can move me. Nothing will move me. Not all of a sudden somebody says something and you're running for your life. you up under a Judah, but you can Peter tells Jesus, nothing will move me. All of a sudden, some things started happening with Jesus. Next thing we know, be gone. Toward even, Jesus died and he rose again. He had to go. He says, hey, hey, go tell them I'm alive. Actually, the scripture says, go tell the disciples and Peter. He, he was so far gone. They were like, hey, don't forget about Peter. He done moved. He gone. Hebrews talks to us about that when the things of life, when, when the, the, the schemes and the tactics of the enemy, when the, the pressures of this world come your way, don't allow it to move you. And Paul is trying to tell the church of Corinth, don't allow it to move you. We see, do we have the scripture, did we make it yet? Do we have the scriptures in Hebrew? Can we, do we have Hebrews chapter 6 or I need to run and find it? In Hebrews chapter 6, and it's a good thing. Because you all going to have to find it yourselves when you get home. You're like, it wasn't on the screen. It'd be all right. 
Hebrews chapter 6, we're going to read verses 17 to 20. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 17 to 20. I love this. And he says in verse 17, Thus God, determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of the promise, the immutable of his counsel, counsel confirmed by its oath, that by two immutable things, which is impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation who have fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. Verse 19, this is where I want to go. This hope we have is an anchor. Somebody shout an anchor. This hope we have as an anchor of our soul, both sure and steadfast, which enters the presence behind the veil, and it goes on. But that verse 19 is where I want to sit. This hope that we have as an anchor. Somebody shout an anchor. Somebody shout an anchor. I heard little crumb snatchers yelling louder than that. Somebody shout anchor. The word anchor is used there, it is used metaphorically for that which supports or keeps one steadfast in the time of trial or doubt. So think of, I see him pop up on the screen back here. In the time of trial or doubt, he says you have to be anchored in him. Paul says to Corinthians, he says, listen, don't be moved. Jesus tells them, go tell that fox, basically, nothing's going to move me. Do you see where we're heading with this? Hebrews is saying here that the purpose of an anchor is to keep you from drifting. It keeps you from being carried away by every wake and current that swirls past. He says, be anchored in him. Because there's going to be currents of popular culture. Say that about 12 times. You can't. Currents of popular culture that are going to go by and be like, oh, that seems, that seems right because culture is telling you it's right. You're going to see things that are going to go and it's, oh, well, maybe, 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 maybe that's not. Maybe, 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 no. Maybe, oh, maybe, 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 maybe. And all of a sudden you find yourself. And he's saying in Hebrews, I need you to be anchored. Because it's going to keep you from drifting. Stick with that today. It keeps you from being carried away from every wake and current that swirls past. Ultimately, it keeps you from capsizing. It's an agent of security. It's an agent of steadiness. That no matter how unpredictable or challenging the elements become, you remain stable. Are y'all with me? So I brought a, a sermon. So this scripture, the, the first Corinthians scripture. Can we pull it up or was or are we taking a risk? In 1 Corinthians, he says, he's saying, and that was the scripture that erupted in me, and I think in February, it was just this right here, and I've been sitting on it. I've been sitting on it for like six months. Let nothing move you. And that's what I've just been telling myself. Because David had to encourage himself in the Lord. And everything that's happened, I said, let nothing move me. Not, let nothing move. And you hear, you begin to hear this, and you hear a lot of uh, this, and people talking here, and people saying that. Let nothing move you. Let nothing move you. And then you hear people just saying, see, see what, what begins to happen? And then I thought, oh, you know what? I got, the, I, I, got a, I, got a, I got a sermon illustration for this. And this is what the Lord gave me. This is, they use for workouts. I don't know the official name to it. But it's a sled. And if this sled is not anchored down, John, I'm moving your stuff. If this is not anchored, and this is what he's trying to illustrate in Corinthians and Hebrews, and he's talking about if it's not anchored down, then culture is going to move you. Friends will talk you out of going to church. 
And he goes further in this in the Bible. If you read it from, from front, from Genesis to Revelation, you can see, because it even begins in the book of Genesis, the enemy is tempting Adam and Eve to get them to what? To, to move them. To move them out of their position of what they had in him. And so if you begin to read through the Bible, the Bible is constantly saying, don't let tribulations move you. Don't let trials move you. Don't let difficulty move you. If I, if, if, if I am calling you to stand in the things that I've called you. All the promises of God are yes and amen. If he says I'm going to be blessed in the city, I'm going to be blessed in the field, guess what? I'm standing in that. If he said no weapon formed against me shall be able to prosper, I'm standing in that. If greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, I'm standing on that. If the enemy comes in like a flood, but the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against it, I'm standing on that. If no eye has seen nor ear has heard nor has it entered the heart of man, the things that God has prepared for me, I'm standing on that. If he says, I'll open up the windows of heaven and I'll pour out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive it. Hey, I'm standing on that. But the Bible is, is saying, listen, fear will come, but don't let it move you. Worry will come. He said, what Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow. Don't let that, what? Get up with me today. Come on now. Don't let it move you. Don't let the culture, don't let the current, don't let the trials, don't let your feelings, don't allow the world, don't allow the enemy, don't allow principalities, don't allow powers to take you here. I got one minute. I'm preaching this right here. I'm coming to church, and I'm going to praise the Lord, and, I'm, and you come week after week, but then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, life starts getting a little turmoil. And the enemy says, I got a perfect opportunity. And where, where you used to be in that row, and we could always count on you being in that row. The enemy moves you. Peter said, I will... Never be moved. But Hebrews is telling us this. Hebrews is telling us this. He says, listen, you have got to, and we are living in a time that this is so important because you will be carried away by anything anyone says. I get let me to go. You and Hebrews is telling us be anchored. Be anchored. Be anchored what? Help me, Jonathan. Be anchored. Be anchored in. Can you show them real quick before you throw it on there? Be anchored in him. And I know that seems like just the, the elementary principles. But it's so important. The biblical principles of life. Being anchored in him. Timothy tells us there's one mediator between God and man. And that's the man. You know how it is back in, if you're around my age, you would tell people, oh, you the man. Oh, you the man. They do something. Oh, you the man. I know somebody who's a man way before you were ever the man. And this man hung on the cross, went down, but on the third day rose again. He said there's one mediator between God and man. There are no other. I don't care how great you think your friend is. There's only one mediator between God and man. It, well, I went to them for counseling. I went to them for help. I went to them. No, you have to run to Christ for help. You got to run to the King of glory for help. There's only one mediator between God and man, and that is the man, Jesus Christ. Y'all ain't ready for me today. Philippians tell me, tells me that there's no other name given among men. No other name that's greater 
goes even further. It says that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Watch. In heaven, on earth, and under the earth. So the Olympic or Paris can do whatever they want to do and they'll say whatever they want to say. I'm just here to let you know one day, one day, every one day, every, he said one day, every knee shall bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. One day. Can I keep going here? In the Gospel of John, they begin to question him, and he walked up. He says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one shall come unto the Father except through me. Gospel says, whatever you ask in his name. Wherever two or more gather, there he is. I love it because blind Bartimaeus, he didn't go to all Roberts University. Blind Bartimaeus wasn't astute in the things of the, of, of, of the, of the Christian culture. But blind Bartimaeus had heard some things. And he heard that this man... Yeshua was passing by. And when he heard that he was passing by, he didn't say, hey, hey, carpenter, hey, you, hey, friend. No, he said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy. And many of them come over and told him, be quiet, be quiet. They tried to get him to move. He says, I'm not moving from here. Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Peter was at the, at the gate of beautiful, and the people were begging, a man was begging for alms. And Peter walked by and said, yo, I, I, I ain't got no money. Silver and gold have I none, but what I have, I give to you, not in the name of Buddha, not in the name of Confucius, not in the name of anybody else, but in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. John chapter 1 tells me in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. John chapter 1 verse 14, I don't need a screen, and I don't need that right there. I mean, I do need that, but I don't need to go to it to find that. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Who was the Word that became flesh and dwelt among us? Jesus was the Word. Oh, I guess I got to keep going up in there. I'm reminded, let me go a little bit deeper. Can I preach this thing? Give me five minutes and just let me just enjoy. Because something happen when you mention his name demons tremble when you mention his name Goliath can't stand when you mention his name mountains gotta move at the mention of his name seas got to part at the mention of his name people got to bow at the mention of his name the name that above all name can I take a minute and let me just preach like I like to preach up in a king Nebuchadnezzar Throw Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fiery furnace. Turns up the fiery furnace. Walks over, wonder what's going on. And said, did we not put three men in that fire? Yes, O oh king, we did. Why? Because I see four men walking in that fire. This is where he flips the script. He says, I see four men walking in the fire, and the fourth is like the Son of God. They prophesied about the Son, but Jesus had not been born yet. What's he talking about, the Son of God? God, when you mention the name Jesus, he'll break rules. He'll break protocol. He'll break anything. He'll break those that said it can't be done. And Jesus, no, 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 no. With me, nothing is impossible. And here, the King of glory stepped up out of heaven, walked into the fiery furnace. I'm wondering if somebody needs God to break protocol. Somebody needs God to break the rules and regulations. Anybody needs uh, your workplace says it can't be done. It can't. If that's you, jump to your feet and shout, Jesus. Oh, that was the weakest. I think I'm going to pack my stuff up. I'm going to move down south. I'm going to go to the beach to try to find some people that want to have some church up in there and have some warm weather. If I'm just going to have some people, Jesus. Oh, you were on Facebook last night talking about all that junk. Oh, I can't believe they did it. And then you get to church like you prune juice, baptize a big old juice. Somebody shout Jesus. Come on, somebody shout Jesus. 
There is no other name under heaven given among men by which you can be. Shout Jesus. Oh, you're still, you're still, you're still like, I can't believe, I can't believe, I can't believe this, I can't believe this. What they did, it's the world being the world. You do what you want to do, but I know the end story. You say what you want to say. That's something you got to work out between you and God because you're going to have to stand before me. It ain't me. If you want to be like that, then you be like that. I just know the end story. And the end story is we win. And when we win, the book of Revelation tells me this. On his robe and on his thigh, he has the name written. King of kings, you read it for yourself. He has the name written King of kings and Lord of lords. He says, I am everything. I am in control. I lead, I guide, I direct. He is the alpha. I'm going to leap a pew in a single bound today. He says, I'm the alpha and I'm the omega. I am the beginning. I'm in between and I am. Yen, can I help somebody in here? He says, I am the rose of Sharon. I am fairer than the lilies of the valley. I am the bright and morning star. I am the lion of the tribe of Judah. I am the lamb of God. I am the chief cornerstone. I am Emmanuel, God with us. I am the wonderful counselor, the mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace, great I am. Somebody shout Jesus. Let me flip it this way. I got to go. I wish I could describe them to you. But he's indescribable. He's incomprehensible. He's invisible. He's irresistible. I'm trying to tell you this morning, the heaven of heavens cannot contain him. Let alone can a man like me explain him. You can't get him out of your mind. You can't get him off your hands. You can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. He is still the king of glory. He's still the great I am. He's still the chief cornerstone. He's still, and if you are not going to be moved, you must be anchored in him. Bring me the next one, Jonathan. The word, we're having, I had a class at Oral Roberts called Biblical Principles. We in Biblical Principles today. Word. The Bible says, study to show thyself approved. Study to show thyself approved. Okay, you're like, well, he's talking, to, that's in Timothy, that's the pastoral epistles, and you know, oh, I'll come down your road. He says, be, always be ready to give a defense. For the hope that lies down inside of you. He says, be ready to give a dissertation because at some point you will be questioned about the faith that's down inside of you. Be ready. Be ready to give a defense. Why? Hello? My biggest fear. For Impact Church. My biggest fear. That you would grow up in this church, but never grow up in Christ. Well, I've been in church for 20 years. And you can't even quote John 3.16. My biggest fear, honestly, my biggest fear. It's not about people. It's like, oh, I just, one day there's going to, I'm going to, I show up my biggest fear that nobody's going to be here. I, I preach to two like I'm preaching to 20,000. And that's for, that's on the reels. As Noah said, that's no cap. But my biggest fear is that, that you have been here 
10, 11, 12 years, but have never grown up in Christ. Paul had the same issue speaking to the church of Corinth, which we get first and second Corinthians. He had so much to say to him, he wrote two letters. He's like, I ain't done yet. He kept going. But you read it. You read it. He's, he, Paul's dealing with the same thing. He's like, y'all, y'all, y'all. I don't think he used y'all, but. He says, oh, y'all, y'all, y'all want to prophesy and y'all want to do the, the gifts of the Spirit. Because you read through all that. Y'all want the gifts of the Spirit. And even in 1 Corinthians, he's talking about uh, uh, love. And he says, oh, you, you want to uh, prophesy in the mysteries of God. And, and, but he says, y'all immature. He says, you're still on the bottle when you should be eating solid milk. I mean, drinking solid milk or eating food. He says, when I was a child, I acted like a child. But when I came a man, I put away foolish things. Let me wrap that up and say it this way. Yeah. He's telling the church of Corinth, which is the, uh, my biggest fear as a pastor. This is it. This, this, this right here is it. That we know how to play church, but we're immature. We know how to worship. We know when to lift our hands. We know when to say amen. We know what to say. We know what to do. We know we can high five somebody, but we have no substance in us. We have no word in us. He says, let nothing move you, immovable. That you will not be moved. If, if you don't have his word and what he says about you, how do you think Genesis, we got in this hot mess? If you don't know what God says about you, if you don't know what God says about you, then you'll fall for anything. If you don't, if you don't know that the plans he has for you are to prosper you and not to harm you, then you think God's out to get you. Then you'll be moved all around. But if you're anchored, if, 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 if you're anchored, if you're anchored in him, then nothing will be able to move you. This is why I'm almost through. This is why. Can I just let this out? Yeah. If you would have said no, I'd have said it. I'm going anyhow. This is why, like, we do media. And we've been like pushing towards the media and getting on YouTube. And that's why we did last week. Hey, get, get, uh, uh, be, be a follower on YouTube and, and follow that. Listen, I, I, my wife will be the first one to tell you. I am not trying to keep up with the Elevation Church or Stephen Furtick. I know who I am in the things of the kingdom. I'm not trying to keep up with the Joneses. What we're trying to do, what this team is trying to do is to make sure the word because Jesus said, listen, when the seed is sown, the enemy, the enemy will come in and he will try to snatch that word. The Bible says, while men slept, the enemy came in. And so we want to make sure that we're not trying to be YouTube famous. There's nobody on the team want to be YouTube famous. But we're able to get that word out there and say, listen, when the trials and tribulations through the week, when you're hearing the storm and things are happening and culture's pushing on you and Facebook's pushing on you and social media's pushing on you and Instagram's pushing on you and TikTok's pushing on you and you feel worthless and you're not sure, then you're able to pull that word. And I got this word. I got this word. I got, I got this word. You can jump on our app and get the word. It's not that we're trying to be anybody else, but trying to let the word be in you richly. Jimmy DeMarco, he's on vacation. Jimmy DeMarco takes notes every single Sunday. Every scripture, everything, I mean, I mean notes. I want to start uh, on the app, Jimmy's Amen Corner. That you would be able to go on the app and just see the notes. That you would be able to say, man, what was that scripture pastor was talking about? What was that, what was that scripture? I wanted to go back. I wanted to read that. What was the pastor saying? I, 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 need, I need. That's why we do Bible studies. That's why we have things. We don't want you to be moved by every wake and current that swirls past. I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. Hey, Jonathan, you ready? I'm going quick. 
Well done. What we got? Next steps. Next steps. Next steps. Next steps. Next steps. Basically being planted or serving. I know I harp on this, but this is just so important. Planning, being planted in church or, or serving in some capacity. Because we want you to be a pillar, not a caterpillar. We want you to be a pillar and not a caterpillar. A pillar holds up the church. A caterpillar just crawls in and out of church. We want you to be a pillar, not a caterpillar. I was watching a reel. Just indulge me for a second. I was watching, watching, watching a reel. Most of mine are sports reels. And they had this person uh, dribbling a basketball. But the basketball seemed not deflated, but you could tell it didn't have much, much air in it. And so they're, and then they stop and you know how they do the reels and stuff like that. Now they got me. They're like, hey, if your ball is flat and you don't have a pump near you or the right needle, because the basketball takes a specific needle for it, and you don't have the right needle for it, throw your basketball in the dryer. And then they say, you know, you see the person, and they got the dryer, and they throw the basketball in the dryer. I'm like, you lying. Like, you can't believe everything that's on the Internet. And I'm like, and then the next picture they show is them dribbling the basketball, and the height is so much better than at first. I'm like, I'm so Googling this. I have to find out if this is true. Because I, I'm, I'm going to go take our basketball that's in the front yard because it ain't hardly got any air in it, and I'm so throwing it in the dryer right now. But I wanted to Google it first before Stephanie heard the... <laughs> Do you have something in the dryer? No, no. <laughs> so I Googled it. And it's saying that it works. Somebody try it. When you get home and, and Facebook me, please. But it's saying this. The heat from the dryer doesn't add air to the ball. It just takes what little it has and expands it. Can I say that again? Because I'm going to go a little further, but I'm going to come back to this. It doesn't add air to the ball. It just takes what little it has and expands it. This is why we talk about next steps. This is why we talk about being planted. This is why we talk about serving. This is, we're basically saying, be all in. Be all in. Don't, don't be caterpillar in and out. Be all in. When you come, be all in. What do you mean? Be, be, be all, be, I, I didn't bring, bring my phone, but throw me my phone, Steph. Just throw it. I true, I don't want you throwing it. <laughs> that thing would have been over there. She had some shoes right by me. I was like, throw it to me. It's like, <laughs> Be all in. John, you here? Hey, come up here and just uh, play, the, play the first song. Just you real quick. No, we're not going to do the whole thing. I need to make a point real quick. Run as fast as you can. <laughs> Time is ticking. Do the uh, hello, joy. Hey, David, run up here. Hit, the, hit a beat. I need a beat. You can run. You just testified that the Lord's healing your legs. <laughs> Come on, you're like Usain Bolt. Let's go. <laughs> give me, uh, uh, give me, uh, just give me something. Okay. On the first song. Right. You sing it too. When Christ got up, I got up too. Hell lost its grip, hell had to lose. I said yes to what? Jesus, and everything changed. Right. Jesus did. Can you stop for a second? Hold on right there. Being all in does not mean when they're doing praise and worship. <laughs> Go ahead, sing. Go ahead. You can, you can. I believe in you. 
I believe you can fly. When Come Christ on. got up, I got up too. I lost its grip, hell I had to lose. I say yes to Jesus, and everything changed. Jesus right, so did it. Being all in, it's like I'm all here. I'm here, I'm, I'm pushing everything aside. I'm not allowing the things of this world to, I'm not allowing the thing, I'm not allowing the things of this world to move me. I understand you got to check your phone. I understand somebody in an emergency, the kids are at home, things here, things happen. I'm not saying, I'm talking about being all in, being there. Be, watch, 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 I'm going somewhere. You say, he's, he's so lost. I'm not lost. I'm like the little dog you think is lost, but I'm, I'm coming back home. <laughs> being a pillar, being all in, and serving. Serving. Those who serve, I love you. If you're not serving, I love you too. <laughs> but there's a super duper love on those that are serving. Why? Not because well, they're doing a bunch of stuff for him. Listen. Listen. My wife will tell you, nothing stops me from preaching the word of God. Amen. If y'all didn't show up, guess what? This would still happen. Because my wife, when, she, when we, we, we met at ORU, but she didn't like me when we were at ORU. And I was pastoring when she came to Georgia. I was pastoring in Georgia. And... That's, we went to ORU and blah, blah, blah. Long story. This ain't a love, love connection here. <laughs> but it is. And she'll tell you. I was like, oh, you coming to church? Yeah. I did the worship. I led worship. I did. I can't sing a lick. I led worship. Hold on, hold on, I'll tell you. I'll, I'm going to tell you. I led worship. Back in those days, you didn't have this cool stuff. Let's tell my age a little bit. You had transparencies. And not only transparencies, watch, but you had like tapes and CDs. I had no band. I just would lead worship through a CD. Tell them it's the truth. And I would say, come on, lift your hands and worship. And they would, I'd say, close your eyes and worship. I would jump off. See, this is where male athlete of the year come in. I would jump off the stage. I'd flip the transparency, run back to the back where the sound booth was. Oh, well, come on, give them praise and give them glory. Run up in there, hit it like I was DJ Kendon K. Come on, somebody. <laughs> DJ Big K. K -k 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 I would flip the CD to number three, run back, leap up on the stage, and begin to sing. Everybody say, bless, bless. And then we would just start singing, and we would start magnifying. I'd be the usher. I'd lay hands on people. Somebody fall out, I'd catch them. I'd pick them up, turn back around, pray for them again. I took the offering. I collected the offering. I counted the offering. Nothing was going to move me because I know, watch. But here... Here, serving, serving, serving. What is serving? Serving is preparation for his presence. And I don't make anybody in this house serve. I twist John's hand, arm. He's the only one. Because I don't want to do worship. So I'm like, you're doing it this Sunday. <laughs> but everybody who serves, their heart, they want to see the presence of God. Because they know when the presence of God comes that people will get set free, people will get delivered. And so the people that serve, whether they're setting up, whether they're coming on Saturdays, in preparation for his presence. I know you think I went down the wrong, I turned on Route 7. <laughs> but the boulders did not fall yet. I'm coming back. <laughs> we need to be all in. Serve as preparation for his presence, Right? Let me say this, the heat from the dryer for the basketball doesn't add, doesn't add, it just takes what little it has and expands it. Being a pillar, being all in, serving, preparation for his presence, 
Acts chapter 2, Jesus says they were all discombobulated. Acts chapter 2, right? Jesus said, I want you to go and I want you to tarry. I want you to start praying. And Acts chapter 2 says when they got in one accord, when they got in a preparation for his presence, when they got all in, when they weren't arguing and fussing and fighting and doing all these things, they got all in. They became pillars and not caterpillars. They were running in and out. And, oh, what are we going to do now? What's going to happen? She said, go and tarry. And they got all in. They were serving. They were preparation for his presence. Do you know what happened next? All of a sudden, wind came. Not only wind come, but it talked about cloven tongues of fire filled the house. Oh, I wish I had somebody. Being a pillar, be, being a pillar, being a ser serving, what you're doing is that you're causing fire to come into the house so that people, when they walk in, they walk in with little strength, with little minute strength, and they can't go on in that marriage, and they can't go on with this job, and they can't go on with life, and they're thinking about ending life. When they walk in here, when there's fire, fire will cause the little to begin to expand. So you you walk in like Steve Urkel, but when you get here and the fire of the Holy Ghost begins to happen, it begins to, you walk in like Popeye, but you leave with some spinach and you say, where's Bruden? I'm getting ready to take him out. Being a pillar, being all in, you're creating the fire of the Holy Spirit. And when the fire of the Holy Spirit begins to get in the house, the anointing that's down inside of you begins to expand. Purpose down inside of you begins to expand. Glory that's down inside of you begins to expand. How many are ready to see some expansion in this house? Jump to your feet this morning. Jesus did it, it is fitting. Goodbye, fear and anxiety. That's one. Hello, joy and perfect peace. Goodbye, lies and questioning. Jesus did it, All right, it is fitting. This is, this is, this is what Impact Church is about. That somebody comes here and they have no strength. That's why I be all in. Because you don't know what that neighbor is dealing with beside you. You don't know what kind of giant. And they've been looking at a Goliath. And they're like, I have no energy. I have nothing in me. I can't, I can't beat this giant. But when they come into Impact Church, and whether you just set up here or set up here, the fire and the anointing of the Holy Ghost, they leave this place. They leave this place. You'll see them walking through Kroger's going like this. You'll see them walking in Walmart like this. You'll see them say, I, I thank, I'm thankful for service today. I'm so thankful for service today. Hold on, I gotta finish my last point. Hey Rocco, come here real quick. Hurry up, come on. I know you're a kicker, but you should be a little quicker. Come on, jump up here. Get on that. Hey, Jonathan, bring it. Yeah, stand right there, bring it. Hey, turn around. Don't look. It just says don't kick me after service. That's all it says. <laughs> don't do life alone. life alone you have got to listen to me you have got to have godly people in your life that will help you be anchored in the things of the kingdom you have you have got to you have got to 
couple weeks ago, the guys went on a, a rafting trip. Did you go? I love it. I thought I'd seen your mug up in there. You got to keep that. You have got to have godly people in your life. I didn't even organize it or, or do anything. I just got a text message Friday or Thursday or something. I was in a group text that the guys in on their own just got together and went to a gun range and shot guns and hung out, fellowshiped. The Bible says his iron sharpens iron. It wasn't about the shooting of the gun. It was about, it's the connect groups. Don't do life alone. That's why we have connect groups. That's why we have Bible studies. That's why we have, should I tell them? Can we give the secret up? Let's tell the secret. So we have a little thing that we call people always ask, why do you always have the door shut? Why do you always have the door shut? We call it, what did you call it? The Doors of Force Fellowship. The Doors of Force Fellowship. It's John's idea. I'm like, man, we gotta, we gotta get people just, we gotta get people connected. And John's like, I got an idea. Let's shut the doors and then make them. I'm like, like Force Fellowship? He's like, exactly, that's what we're calling it. The Doors of Force Fellowship. So in the doors, it's, you have got, you have got, because this is what it happens. When, when the turmoil of life, when the trials and tribulations, when things begin to happen, you have got, <laughs> man, something that I thought it was going to be. You, you can't be moved. And this is what he was saying in Corinthians have Christ rooted in your life. I don't care what the world's saying. I don't care what any they're throwing on TV. I don't care what they, what they do. Christ in your life. The word has got to be in you. Be in church. Be all there. Be there. And then have godly relationships. This, this is it right here. This is the, the biblical principles of life be all in. Come on, let's lift our hands towards heaven. Let's sing it. Let's go Goodbye, out with this. shame and brokenness. Come on. Hello, joy and happiness. Goodbye, lies and questioning. Jesus did it. It is finished. Goodbye, fear and anxiety. Hello, joy and perfect Jesus did it, it is finished, yeah, when Christ got up. You went there, might as well go, I hear it. <laughs> are you singing it or are you waiting on me? I'm oh, waiting on me, all right. All right, let's pray today. Father, we thank you today. Lord, we love you today. Lord, I pray that the, the word would come alive for your people today. Let it just come alive. Lord, let it just live richly in them today. Lord, I pray that they would just give them a hunger and thirst for your word. I pray that they would have a hunger and thirst for fellowship, that they would have a hunger and thirst to be a pillar and not a caterpillar. Father, we're waiting on you. We're waiting on you. Lord, I pray for those that they've been moved by so many things in life. M moved by relationships. Moved by disappointment. Moved by fear. Moved by worry. Moved by regret. Lord, I pray that this word today and this illustration would remind them that I got to get back to these biblical principles that, that his word says that I shall not be moved. Strengthen your people here today. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Amen. Come on, ushers. We got, I know we got ushers here. The ushers are going to come forward. This is your time for the prayer cards and your offering. Oh, Rob, she told me to kick you off. Stay up here with me. I like you up here. He's doing a great job. All right, ushers, go ahead. The ushers are going to come by. Listen, we want to pray for you. Don't do life alone. We want to pray for you and believe that God.
we have an usher on this side? You waiting for your usher? See, you won't go by yourself. I love it. Waiting on your guy. Waiting on your, you. Want to... All right, go ahead. We're good. All right, they're going to pass it out. Once you're able to give, don't forget the prayer cards. Don't forget prayer tomorrow night. We're not going to shut the doors and make you fellowship today. But on your way out, do everything that you possibly can to meet someone that you have never met before. Introduce yourself. I'm not saying you got to go home and be Facebook friends. And you guys got to go to Naples afterwards. I'm just saying go up and say, show love. Just show love towards somebody. God bless. Have a wonderful Sunday.